Hey everybody, I'm Peanut Butter Gamer and hey, listen. Anyway, I'm Peanut Butter Gamer and today you must construct additional pylons. As I was saying, today we're going to talk Take about care of the guy behind me, Fox. You know, sometimes you just don't want to do what you're told. Sometimes you'd rather explore and find fun and interesting things at your own pace. This is exactly why I've always loved side quests in video games. There's something about completing an optional side quest that's occasionally more rewarding than just following the main familiar objective. So, today we're... Hey! Going over my top 10 side quests in video games. Let's do it. Everybody knows that Zelda has some great side quests, but seeing as how Zelda month is coming up, I'm just gonna throw Zelda at number 10 and give some other games some time in the spotlight. For now. <laughs> also, most of my favorite side quests I've either already talked about or everyone already knows about. Like the Biggeron Sword, Anju and Kaifei, the Tempered Sword, I messed this part up, the Alien Ghost, Biggeron Sword, uh, I'm repeating, the Hand Toilet Quests, and so on. So I figured instead of being redundant, I'd talk about a different side quest from the oft-criticized Skyward Sword, which has some of the most entertaining and unique side quests in my opinion. While I love Skyloft and the Gratitude Quests, I'm gonna go with the Thunder Dragon's Lightning Round. Basically, it's just refighting every boss in the game, but you have to do it all in a row, so we better stock up on some potions. Oh, well, never mind. Potions and pouch items are prohibited for some unexplained reason. He also kindly informs me that if you lose, it's all over. You won't be going home in one piece. Still interested? Uh, yeah, I guess so. This whole thing is starting to sound less and less appealing very quickly. If you manage to beat all 12 bosses in a row, you get 9,900 rupees. But the real price to go for is the Hylian Shield at eight in a row. Considering you don't unlock the lightning round until you're near the end of the game, it's definitely nice to finally be able to run around with this iconic shield. But you know what? I think I'm gonna keep going and push my luck, starting to fight the tougher bosses with just a few hearts left? What could go wrong? I've always been a big fan of Star Wars, and I've played my fair share of Star Wars games, one of my favorites being Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic. While I mostly enjoy it for the main storyline, it also had a handful of interesting side quests. On the first planet of the game, Taris, or Taris, you're looking for a Jedi named Bastila and need to get to the lower section of the city. Unfortunately, to get to the lower section of the city, you have to be a Sith soldier or at least be able to pass as one. The easiest and most beneficial way to accomplish this, considering you can get either light or dark side points for it, is to simply head to the apartment where some Sith soldiers are harassing an alien, kill them, and take their armor. But there's an optional as well as more entertaining way to do it. Go to the cantina and find either Sarna or Yun, depending on which gender you're playing as, and talk to them. Once you get on their good side, they'll invite you to a party, and here we are. Party's in full swing. Come on in. Full swing, eh? Color me not so impressed. It's a party. They decide to take a drink, and in a matter of five seconds, they all pass out blind drunk. Either whatever they drank is the strongest drink ever concocted, or the Sith is full of a bunch of lightweights. Shots, 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 slides, shots, 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 only one shot, 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 only one shot, and I passed out. Then all that's left to do is steal some Sith armor from them, and now even I can be a cool guy, and everyone will finally like me. You're one of them Sith, ain't you? My mommy says I'm not supposed to talk to you. Ah, never mind. In Rune Factory Frontier, there's a sad looking guy named Cross that no one ever seems to mention or notice at all. In fact, when you talk to him, sad music starts to play. You know, I kinda like it. I think I'm gonna start using it in videos from now on. Hey everybody, I'm Peanut Butter Gamer, and I like to make videos and play video games and I like to please subscribe to my channel, and I like to play Zelda. Unless you need him to upgrade your house or build something for you, most players probably ignore him at first. Eventually, a guy named Brodick also moves into town, and seemingly all he does is harass and make fun of you. I hear tomorrow is the coming of age day. Take a hint and grow up. Huh. Well, that's nice. <laughs> He even goes as far as destroying parts of your field and crops. 
but it gets worse. After a while, he starts building golems to murder you. In the summer of year two, if all the prerequisites are filled, Brodick will send you a challenge letter. You meet him in the green ruins where you see his completed golem and then see his completed golem knock him out cold. Should have been more careful, Brodick. <laughs> Then out of nowhere, Cross shows up, grabs Brodick's limp body, and jumps off the screen like some kind of frog man. He jumps really far and high. And now it's time to fight the golem. Yeah. Unfortunately, I was nowhere near strong enough to actually beat him. And considering it took forever to even get this far, I decided for the sake of ever finishing this video that I would just leave it at this. If you do manage to beat him, you discover that Brodick is a special agent for the Zizx, however you pronounce that, Empire, and he's searching for an officer who defected from the Zizx army. Brodick mistook the player for that officer, but in reality, he was looking for Cross the whole time. Moral of the story? Cross probably should have said something about this sooner. So yeah, thanks for that, Cross. Some side quests are long and add a decent amount of playtime to a game, others are not. This is an example of the latter. Borderlands 2 and the shoot me in the face guy. Shoot me in the face, 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 now! This is a guy who wants you to shoot him in the face. He's quite adamant about it, actually. Knock, knock, who's there? Shoot me in the face, end of joke. There's not really that much to say about this one, so I figured I'd have a little fun instead. I'm gonna sing a song. Shoot me in the face, shoot me in the face, do it. Shoot me in the face, what are you waiting for? Shoot me in the face, shoot me in the face, do it now. Shoot me in the face! Thank you! Up next is the Cool X boss fight from Super Mario RPG. Once you get to Monstro Town, you'll find a sealed door that you can't enter. Is this just something the developers put there to drive you mad? Something to constantly taunt you and eat away at your soul wondering what could possibly be behind the door, but too bad because you can't ever even open it? No. That's dumb. You're dumb. I'm dumb. Equality. To open the door, travel back to Moleville and find the guy that sells fireworks. Buy them! Then head out the door and to the right and you'll see a little girl. Talk to her! She wants your fireworks and Mario, being the safe and responsible adult that he is, doesn't seem to have any problem with that. In return, she'll give you a shiny stone that will grant you access to Kulex's room and then she blows up, probably. Kulex. Kind of sounds like a yummy drink. Who is an homage to the Final Fantasy series and is arguably the toughest boss in the game. Although I didn't really have that much of a problem with him. I had the lazy shell on Gino, which at least in combination with his level and the rest of his items made him virtually immune to almost every attack. So I guess all you really need is some patience. All right, I did it with skill. After you defeat him, he breaks the fourth wall a bit and says, Perhaps in another time, another game, we may have been mortal enemies. Let us part as comrades in arms. And then gives you the Quartz Charm, which prevents instant death attacks and increases damage by 50%. So yeah, that's really good. Just in case it wasn't obvious. Donkey Kong Country 2 is a game with monkeys, and they jump. Sometimes they jump into these little gold coins here, but they don't have to. That's what makes it a side quest. Just don't question it. Throughout the game, you'll occasionally come across a guy named Clubba guarding a golden barrel. If you have enough Krim coins, you can jump in and do one of the many Lost World levels. If you don't have enough Krim coins, you get dead. Each of the Lost World levels are unique as well as more challenging than the average level. You've got a lava level I suck at, a jungle level I suck at, an animal level I suck at, Etc. and etc. If you're like me, prepare to see the game over screen a lot. Which is, by the way, the saddest thing I have ever seen. Who in their right mind could possibly put monkeys in a jail like that? Oh, wait. But with perseverance, anyone, even me, can achieve their goals. Believe in yourself. Yeah! Once you beat all the levels, you get a new fight with K. Rule and a pretty awesome bonus ending scene, but. Collecting all those coins is pretty hard, so if you're looking for a shortcut, you can get all 75 Krem coins on the first level with a pretty simple cheat. Start the game, go in, go out, jump, go, get, go again, jump, go in, jump, get, jump, go out, jump, go more, get, keep on keep it on, jump, go in, yay! So yeah, don't 
don't say I never taught you nothing. There's a lot of side quests in Oblivion. For example, <clears throat> the Fighters Guild, Mages Guild, Thieves Guild, Dark Brotherhood, Arena, Origin of the Great Prince, An Unexpected Voyage, The Collector, Cut in the Hunt, Nothing You Can Possess, Lifting the Veil, Legacy Lost, The Battle for Castle Kavach, Tears of the Savior, The Siren's Deception, Where Spirits Have Lease, The Killing Field, and so much more. Just want to remind you that we are. Thanks again. Yeah. My personal favorite is the Dark Brotherhood quest simply known as Who Done It. The Dark Brotherhood needs to kill a lot of people and who better to do it than the ugliest Oblivion character ever! Yay. Actually, I think just about anyone could do some of these quests. I mean, the people I'm killing aren't always the brightest. But this time, it's different. We need to go to a party and kill every single person there without them figuring out who it was. Let's meet one of our soon-to-be victims. Why, hello there, Matilde. I'm an assassin hired to kill you. <laughs> You're a funny one. Well, this is gonna be easier than I thought. In fact, it's going to be even easier than I thought that I thought because there's a very major glitch with this quest. As long as you use a melee weapon of any kind, no one is able to detect you. <gasps> So many people dead. I just don't know who to trust anymore. Congratulations, you are the most oblivious person in the world, and here's what you won! And now we're down to this poor, trusting old lady who was informed of my intentions from the start and still isn't suspicious of me even though we're the last two alive and I'm drawing a bow at her face. I guess I'll put her out of her misery. Oh. Yeah, I did it! I'm maybe a bad person. At number three, we have Bomberman 64. Now I know what you're probably thinking, peanut butter goom, Boomer Boomerman 64 doesn't care about your opinions, I mean have side quests? Well, you're sort of right, I guess. But you can pick up hidden gold cards, so that's close enough in my book. If you collect 100 of these cards, you'll unlock the Rainbow Palace, and along with it, the true ending of the game. Turns out Sirius, this guy right here, who's been helping you this whole time, is the realest bad guy and just all around biggest butthole. Your former enemy, Regulus, teams up with Bomberman to save the day. And he's so helpful. But yeah, that's pretty much all there is to say about it. This one's kinda short. But you better not leave me a complaint or I'll make sure that you pay. Mass Effect is a really fun game, but it does have some pretty lame side quests. Hey, you know what sounds fun? Running around in the Citadel talking to people and then driving around on an empty planet for about 20 minutes just to go all the way back to the Citadel and run around and talk to people even more. Actually, no, I'm just kidding, it's not fun. But Mass Effect 2 does step it up a little bit, especially with the crew loyalty missions. Which one is the best will vary from person to person, but me, I enjoy tallies. Granted, she's my favorite character, so I may be a bit biased, but I have a YouTube channel which by default makes my opinions more important. Deal with it. <laughs> While serving with you on the Normandy, Tally receives a message from the flotilla, which is basically an enormous fleet of ships that serves as Aquarius' temporary home after being forcefully removed from their planet of Rannoch by the Geth that they created. <laughs> but I mean, everybody already knows that. The message is basically a summons to Corian court for treason and the punishment being exile from the fleet forever. Oh no! So you make your way to the flotilla and speak with the admirals residing over the hearing, and boy are they really nice. You are simply idiots. Idiots, idiots. It was a pleasure to meet you, Commander. You too. I don't want to spoil too much of it for you, but eventually there is some combat involved as well. You gotta kill all the people except their robots. Then you defend Tally's honor in court with a speech that sounds at least five times better with the Phoenix Wright music behind it. Tally Zora saved the Citadel. She saved the Alaron. She showed the galaxy the value of the Quarian people. I can't think of stronger evidence than that. You tell him, Shepard. All oh, my legs. The Fallout series has some amazing side quests. In fact, I'd be hard pressed to mention side quests without mentioning Fallout. One of my favorites is a quest from Fallout New Vegas called Come Fly With Me. Once you get to the town of Novak, you'll run into some folk who don't quite like all them ghouls that have been showing up lately. Classic racism, if you ask me. They just need to take some time to talk to the ghouls, and then maybe they can come to understand each other. 
Well, okay, I think I see their point now. So you go investigate the Repcon test site where they've been appearing, and dang, they're pretty spooky. Well, most of them are anyway. Here's a present. Kaboom! Ah, oh, my arms! Ah. Uh, Once you get inside, you'll be led by a ghoul over the intercom who ends up not being a ghoul and just a regular crazy guy to an area of religious schools represented by Jason Bright. Jason tells you all about his super amazing plan of escaping the wasteland and entering some sort of utopian world. But their plans were interrupted by some invisible demons and he asks me to go check it out. Personally, I'm not superstitious, so I'm not really worried about it. <laughs> After you finish clearing out the demons, aka Nightkin, you do a couple small fetch quests in which I totally didn't do any of the terrible things being shown on the screen right now, and then it's time for the launch. If you simply launch the rockets, they fly off to who knows where, and that's it. But if your science level is over 50, you can alter the course of the rockets for better or for worse. Don't worry, you guys. I consider myself very knowledgeable on rockets and stuff, so I got this under control. All right, coordinates set, let's do this! Huh. Well, that's not a good. But yay! People finally like me! And all it took was sabotaging a rocket launch and killing a bunch of people! I would like to thank everybody for the support. I knew I could do it one day, and I just believed in myself. And it finally happened, and now I can be happy for the rest of my life, and be able to be free, and live in the amongst the people, and I'm going to jail. I'm going to jail. I gotta go now. This episode of Peanut Butter Gamer is brought to you in part by Audible.com. Hey everybody, thank you so much for watching this video. If you want to help support this show and me, then please consider signing up for a free Audible trial with the link in the description below, audible.com slash peanut. Audible.com is a website where you can download and listen to over 150,000 audiobooks. And again, if you use the link in the description below, the trial is free and you even get a free audiobook. I'm suggesting Ready Player One by Ernest Cline. It's one of my favorite books and it's about video games and the arcades in the 80s, but it's set in the future. So yeah, you'll see. And if you don't enjoy it, then you can cancel at any time. So yeah, that's all I have to say. Thanks. Hey everybody, thanks for watching this video. I didn't mean for it to be over 17 minutes long. Oopsies. If you want to see new videos as they come out, then hit the subscribe button because that's what it does. If you enjoyed it and you want to hit that little like button down there, I'd certainly appreciate it. Let me know what you think in the comments and all that good stuff and yeah. If you want to see more videos, well, I've got them. You can click here to see the last video I did on weird iPad games. Also, there's a bunch of the other ones too. And check out the new season of Hardcore, Terraria Hardcore number two on PVG Gameplay. Yay. Bye-bye. Am I done? Can I go home now? No? Okay.